Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to take a walkabout on our new Casador uh, golf cart slash UTV, uh, as it's described in some literature. I think UTV uh, or utility vehicle is a bit of a stretch uh, for this um, particular machine. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll walk through that. I mean, maybe it'll do exactly what you need it to do as far as the utility is concerned. It'll certainly get it done for a golf cart, I think. Um, but we will start from the top and work our way down. And um, I've learned a bit since uh, for owning it the last uh, two days or so. Um, but you do learn a lot, right? And um, uh, we'll, we'll go through it all. All right, we bought this machine uh, two days ago. Uh, the owner that we purchased it from uh, was using it to, uh, within his subdivision, he uh, was taking it to his community pool and uh, he recently bought a pool, so he doesn't need to travel through his subdivision to get to the community pool. Uh, it's a 2018, uh, we're in uh, January of 2021 now, so it's a couple years old and uh, seems to be in really good uh, shape. We've got about 273 miles on this. I'll show you how I know that here in, in a little bit. Uh, we'll get back to it. Uh, we brought it home and uh, uh, put it in a five by nine U-Haul trailer, which there was inches uh, to spare. And I mean, not, not a whole inch, right? Man, in some cases, fraction up. So if you need to transport, you probably want a bigger trailer so you can tie the thing down. I couldn't, uh, there just wasn't the room uh, available to me. So let's, uh, let's go from this, let's go take it from the top and then we'll work our way down. All right, so we have this, uh, this rigid uh, top on it. It, comes, it handles the uh, front compartment uh, pretty nicely. Um, but you notice here, we don't have anything in the back, right? So if you were to use this as seats, uh, put your little kids in there or, you know, mother-in-law or, you know, whatever, we've got that action going here. So they're not covered up. So if the sun is beating down, that could be a bit of a problem. I am aware that uh, some of the newer models um, actually extend out, uh, but I, I haven't verified that. It's just something that I heard. So you got the flip down. Uh, that's awesome. The way we want to use this machine is at our beach house uh, we uh, they allow uh, it's a drive-on beach right so you can take cars vehicles uh, all manner of four-wheel or two-wheel drive uh, vehicles down on the beach and if you want to be in the cool kids club at the beach you need a cart right of some description either it's a you know a utility vehicle or it's a you know a, a nice little cart or something like that but everybody's got these things and this the first thing out of their mouth is is, is like what kind of you know golf cart are you driving if you just meet them it's like oh man i don't have one of those uh, okay well we do now right um okay so let's talk about price for a second so we paid um uh, uh, the uh, uh the owner of this vehicle thirty six hundred dollars uh for this cart which is way less than some of these things can get now i have rented a number of them we've driven a number of them and i have a lot of opinions and i don't mean that in a good way about how these things are typically assembled um they're they're just they're just not put together well and you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on these things but again you know you got to get in the cool kids club so you know that that's what you're faced with uh, I don't like um, I, I don't like that feeling, right? I you know, and if you want to go up to something that's really, really like higher end, right? I mean, you're you're up over ten grand, um, I, I think. So there's a lot of money being uh, trading hands here, right? And I, I just you know, the value is is questionable at best, right? Okay, so I mean, I think the thing looks good, right? It's a good looking vehicle. Um, I like the color. We don't have anything weird going. They've put on this uh, sort of this folk far, uh, carbon fiber uh, on this uh, uh, hood apparatus up here. Like that a lot. Um, this is a Chinese knockoff, right? So if you start to think about uh, brand names in these things, you know, Easy Go is one of them. And to be honest with you, I don't know what the other ones are, but. You know, you do do a little bit of shopping and the same ones keep coming up and everybody's got their preference and their thought patterns about it and, you know, and all that. So 
you know, this being a Cazador, that is definitely a Chinese knockoff. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Uh, and have they've elected to uh, brand, um, I think, similar machines in different, in different ways, right? So it just kind of depends on what it is that you're talking about. All right, so let's talk about the top, right? So we've got this... Um, we talked about semi-rigid uh, roof on it, which is actually really sturdy. I mean, I like that a lot, right? I've checked the welds on these things, um, you know, kind of throughout. They're not horrible. They're not the greatest, but you wouldn't expect them to be. Um, as we move down, we've got seat belts in, in, in this one is actually installed backwards. It's got a twist in it. I'll fix that. Uh, I think the seats are, are really quite nice. Um, they are form-fitted, at least to some extent. You only have two belts uh, up here in the in the front, and then there's two belts in the in the back. So it's made for four people, but you know we've already you know put a child you know in the middle, right? And um, and just take it easy. Um, uh, we've already seen this thing flip down. Now when we go to the beach, there's a couple things that we just gotta have, right? Uh, we have to have a cooler. We have to have a. We have to have uh, chairs. We have to have typically, if we're going to stay for the day, would be something like a, a canopy, a, like a canopy tent. Uh, so all that stuff gets thrown in the back here. And what's going to happen with this vehicle is that's going to be exposed to like some incredible salt and sand, right? So it got detailed uh, yesterday, but man, it, that's not going to be that way for very long. At least not the uh, not the floorboards or the flat surfaces on here, because everything you do down at that beach gets uh, gets sandy. Now this thing has a 177 cc motor in it um i think that's rated at like 15 or 16 horsepower um it's not a screaming speed demon but it it'll haul some stuff um you know re reasonably well we had a couple of big guys in there um and then um uh, top speed seems to be about 20 miles an hour give or take uh, depending on the, the slope of the street right and uh and so forth it's a carbureted engine so you know you you, you don't have the benefits of fuel injection, which means that they start like, you know, always crisp with a fuel injection. Carbureted, it needs a little help, it needs a little gas, it doesn't really like cold weather. It was really, really, really cool last night, and it was still cool in, uh, in my shop when I backed this thing out. You know, I just give it a little gas, right? Give it, give it a chance to warm up, and, and things seem to be okay. So we've got this roll cage going. Uh, I don't know that it's the best, but I, I don't, I do believe that it's not the worst either, right? I mean, I, I guess if I had to have it, um, would I rather have it or not have it? And the answer is I would rather have that, right? Because it has a sort of a high center of gravity and you can feel that uh, when you take uh, some sharp corners. So if this thing were ever to lay over sideways, right? I, I guess I'd rather have that uh, on the machine than, than not. Uh, right down here, we've got some cup holders. They look pretty, uh, pretty tiny if you ask me. Um, I've tried a couple of cups and they seem to work, but like a Yeti, for example, you know, all the weights up here. And I don't know what happens when you, when you hang a, you know, a pretty serious uh, corner. We've got this nice little brush bumper up here, which I think is a pretty nice little little feature. Um, certainly that brush bumper is gonna hold up at least to some stress. We've got our, uh, our turn signals uh, mounted up here, uh, kind of strangely, I have to admit. Uh, some nice high blow beam headlights, those work well. We've got a mud uh, guard coming out of it. Uh, these tires are, um, rated at 22 uh, pounds per square inch um, and for us we uh, would benefit uh, especially driving in sand is to have that a little bit lower i've got them at 18 now because we're not at the beach but when i get there probably drop them between 12 and 15 pounds per square inch something like that um, because it has suspension on it we'll take a look at that but you know, a softer tire uh, also helps with a smoother ride some of those other carts that i've driven in had no suspension at all and I'm telling you, they'll, they'll just shake your teeth out, man. I mean, they're they're horrible the way they uh, the way they ride. So, some suspension, even though it's not the highest quality, is a whole lot better than none at all. All right, floorboards. Uh, so they're actually made quite well. They actually have a drainage hole uh, right down here. Uh, and when you, we sprayed this whole thing down to detail it, uh, all the water actually went where it was supposed to. So that was, that was really nice to, to see. Now again, this is all going to be covered in sand, right? This is just gonna, only going to take a trip or two. And this thing is just going to be just covered, right? So that's nice to be able to rinse that out of there. We've got a uh, uh, just under five gallon uh, fuel tank. This is a four stroke engine, so it takes a uh, pump gas. Uh, if you're concerned about ethanol, then you're going to have to make some provision for that. Um, and, um, and you know that that will tear some stuff up if you um, 
are concerned about ethanol. I mean, it's just going to. That's just how it works. Um, we have the capability to drive this up to one of the neighborhood gas stations at the beach, so that's really not an issue for us. Uh, you can make these street legal uh, since it has all the lights and the mirrors and everything that you would typically find, including brake lights on it. You um, you you can license this thing. Not it's not like registration for like a car. It's different than that, um, but it's still registration to uh, in some regard. Uh, we also need a slow-moving vehicle, um, orange placard, those things that you see um, that are, are triangular in shape mounted on this thing because uh, we have a highway up there by the beach that, you know, you may use to get to stores and, you know, the gas station and all that. So you need to be able to um, uh, display that in, in some uh, manner, right? Um, coming back here, uh, this was really designed to be, you know, like I said, a, a golf cart. Uh, and this this bar here actually serves two purposes. I mean, it's not it's not real real flimsy, but it's not real real rigid either. And as I understand it, this thing accepts another uh, golf um, golf bag holder, right? And you would use that. So it's probably something you know comes around in here and attaches here and here, and then same on the other side. But you know, it makes for a pretty decent handle. Now, one of the things that it did when um, when it when it starts up and it, it's real real cold is is that there's a lot of vibration in that engine and this thing was just making a horrible racket right so i pulled this off and i stuck a rubber i stuck a rubber a piece of rubber in between there to quiet that down and it really did i mean it just did this thing wonders as terms in terms of quieting this machine down so that was definitely worth it um the, the manufacturer had some of it on there but clearly it was not nearly enough and um, it tends to run rough. Like I said, it's cold natured. It runs rough when, um, just as it's starting up and for like the first several minutes, but you know, it's just like, oh God, that sounds, you know, really, really bad. <laughs> so uh, I did take the time um, in order to do that. Now the um, owner of this vehicle, you know, I just, I don't think he was too much into it or maybe he didn't know how, I, I'm not really sure, right? But, um, the engine underneath this thing, I, I was wondering about the oil. It had no manual, right? Uh, it's Chinese made, so he had nothing on it. And I was like, okay, what kind of oil does it take? How much oil does it take? I have no idea. When I checked the dipstick, um, what I think is uh, braking oil is still in this thing after 270 some odd miles. So, so I'm going to be doing an oil change here before we take it to the beach in another you know week and a half. And, um, and getting it, you know, set up. It has no filter, right? Uh, it's, you know, like a lawnmower engine, essentially, right? So uh, a big one of that, I, I will say that. Um, I also think it could benefit from some carb adjustment, right? Uh, I did boost the uh, idle. It was so low that it just didn't want to stay running um, in some circumstances, so I brought that up. And then um, if there's a mixture screw on there, I haven't actually located it. It's not that easy to find, and I'll show you why here. Let's, let's take a look. You know, so there's half the engine. Um, you, you can't really get you know past this much because it's all filled up with plumbing and you know so forth. Um, uh, the carburetor is right here. Really haven't gotten into it yet. I'll take a little bit more of a closer look. You know, fuel filter uh, coming off the metallic uh, fuel cell. So a little cubby hole down in here. Uh, there was some tools, and they were just absolutely soaking wet. So I pulled those out. Those won't last for for any period of time uh, whatsoever. And um, there's a little, a better look at the uh, actual engine compartment. Now, if we go around back, so the only way that I can see to uh, service this machine is to, to pull this back panel off, which is n not the easiest thing to do, I will tell you. You know, it's not like flipping open a, you know, a, like a hood on a car. I mean, that takes like, you know, like two seconds. But this one, this is gonna be 10 minutes getting this thing off, and then you gotta put it back on even in order to start to uh, access that engine compartment. Um, and while we're here, um, there's some of that suspension that I was telling you about, right? So we've got a coilover shock, and like I said, um, it, it's a whole lot better than nothing. That's what I'm thinking. Um, not, not a plush carpet ride, but it's better than it could be. Uh, and you can see underneath this thing, I mean, it's, it all looks like it's almost like brand new. Uh, we've got a four-wheel disc brake, you know, arrangement on here, which is really, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's really, really, really great. 
Um, I, I like that part. And then here's a you know our brake lights, our our turn signals. Um, you know, look to be like, you know, they're reasonable, right? They do work. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to figure out how this thing stands up to salt water in that salt environment when you're, you're down at the beach. Uh, you know, I've not had anything that lasted a, an incredible period of time without showing some signs of uh, salt corrosion. It's impossible to, uh, you know, stay out uh, ahead of it. Okay, I brought the machine inside the shop because there's, there's too much uh, contrast. So let's take a look at the dashboard and see what we've got here. So let's, let's start with the crazy business first, right? So this is the emergency brake. And if this doesn't look familiar to you, picture this thing flipped upside down in, say, like a passenger car, a Toyota, or, you know, whatever it is. You know, even my wife's Miata has this, right? Well, you, this would be in the center console. This is an emergency brake that you would typically grab like this, right? Push the button and you would manipulate the emergency brake. Well, this thing is completely inverted, right? And it's just awkward to, to use. I mean, it's just weird. Um, you know, you, 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 right? Uh, it maybe doesn't look at so, so hard because I'm outside the vehicle, but when you sit in the thing and you're like, uh, okay, it, it's just weird. <laughs> Um, you know, nice steering wheel. Uh, looks good, right? Actually, and it's straight too. That's a big deal to me. I like that a lot. So if I come over here, we've got a forward, a neutral, and a reverse setting. So we've got that guy. Uh, neutral is indicated by this uh, light right here. We've got the key and then uh, a cluster and uh, some of the rocker switches that uh, they've supplied. A little bit of a, uh, what, a glove box there or open glove box. And um, a little, you know, a little slot here if you want to drop a telephone or something like that. Um, I dare say it might stay dry in most cases. And then we've got a 12 volt adapter uh, available right here. And oh, that's broken. How about that? I don't know. That's the worst thing that can happen because we probably wouldn't end up using that anyway. But there it is. So. Um, fairly intuitive right but you, you know you don't have uh, this is the these are the turn signals and that's how you operate them they actually beep so let's start her up and see what, how, what it sounds like oh and you have to have your foot on the brake in order to start this thing so it has a neutral uh, I guess that would be a neutral safety switch right All right, the red light is that the parking brake, brake is on. We're in neutral, so we got that covered. Then we've got the uh, turn signals. Get an audible on that too, which is pretty helpful. Uh, RPM gauge. Let's see if I can get some of that glare out of there. Uh, fuel gauge. Uh, looks like we're getting low. We've got a battery. I don't know what will happen if the battery ever dies or how that's going to show up. We've got a uh, total miles, uh, total mileage counter and a uh, mile per hour, right? So that's, that's kind of cool. And I've forgotten what is behind here. I, I just don't remember off the top of my head, but um, it's like an engine light thing. Uh, it's got a trip meter on it. So if you really mash down on it, you can get a get the trip thing going. It's got an A and a B, and then back to uh, to the normal the normal setting. Uh, you can hear a little bit of that vibration, right? It was much louder before, so I think we've resolved most of that. Uh, let's pop the hood and see what uh, what's underneath there. couple of catches down here that holds the front down and there you've got a master cylinder you got your battery and then uh, some other electronics right that I really have uh, no idea about so um, you know neat package that's cool right you can get to it you got these uh, straps these rubber straps holding the battery down but it's just that little that little baby battery that typically comes on a piece of farm equipment or a lawnmower you know something like that uh, I've got some what looked to me to be some kind of relays uh, or something along those lines and um, In looking at it a little bit more closely you can see that this whole plastic panel looks like that may come off without 
a whole, whole lot of heartache, right? I don't know, but sometimes you just need access to this stuff. So, you know, it's good to know that, right? So, you know, like, how do you fix this thing or how do you maintain it is, is the challenge. So there's that. You know, these headrests here are um, might be considered uh, pretty much useless. Um, it's, they're as down as far as they'll go. Uh, my wife's top of her head hits about mid-stride uh, mid here. Uh, you could say that those are useless and, you know, why would you even have them or, you know, bother with it? You know, one is they look a little more complete. Two is, is that if you've ever been rear-ended, which I have been, boy, that'll really give you a good snap to the neck, right? So if you got no other option other than for your head to hit this thing it's probably a probably a reasonable thing here uh side mirrors look at these i'm pretty good right i mean that's that's a nice proper side mirror is what i'd call it um adjustable they were all kinds of loose i tightened them up so they don't rattle you know rattle out of position you got two of them too right notice the grab handles i don't know if i pointed that out before but they are here so two things about drivability uh one of them is is that if you're taking a pretty hot corner uh, it, the center of gravity is relatively high, I believe, and like I said, that suspension is not like like crazy good or anything. So it tends to want to lean. Like if you're taking a left, right, it's going to lean right. Uh, it can be a little unsettling if you're a passenger. You know, it sort of feels like you might slide out or tip over. Be careful with that with kids. I can see that might be a problem. Um, you know, and that might be when you want to strap them in for almost for sure with those uh, with those seat belts would be uh, uh, one thought. Uh, the second thing about drivability is is that this small little cart should should hang this amazingly tight uh, turn. And I think all of the components that it needs are there, but the problem is, is that if you ha have ever had a four wheel drive uh, car or truck or, you know, a vehicle that, that you can configure for four wheel drive, they don't like to turn corners, right? Uh, when they're in four wheel drive mode. Um, for some reason, it tends to want to bind up. And, a, and this is a two wheel drive, yet when you give it a hard, a turn it, it, you can feel that same kind of vibration you'll get a little bit of a shimmy out of it and I haven't figured that out any looked at it right I just know that it occurs and um, it, it's you got to give it a lot of gas to make it turn a hard corner um, if at all or just back off of the turn and make a wider turn and it'll it'll smoothen out so a little strange right I don't know what that's all about yet but uh, you know it I, I seriously doubt that that's a you know a deal breaker of any sort so it's just something to be aware of. Uh, so Michelle and I were talking, and I forgot to point this thing out, right? See the switch right here is called override. Um, you, you have to press it down for it to be active, and you let go, and it snaps back into place. I didn't know what that was, and I couldn't find anything. Best I could tell from what I read on the, uh, like, similar machines is that the, uh, the, the machine does not want to back up quickly. Uh, it almost feels as though... The brakes are on is the best way I would describe it. Like it takes a lot of gas to get this thing to move uh, backward. You feel like, man, I'm going to go like backward really fast. I don't know if the brakes are actually activated. They may be. It's what they feel like. And the theory is, is that you press that override button in reverse and that it would like be more smooth and quicker, more responsive. I haven't verified that yet. I, I've tested it like once or twice and I, I didn't notice a difference at all. But there's your override switch.
Well, all right, so there it is. Um, so there is the overview on the uh, Cazador uh, golf cart slash utility vehicle, which it, it, it's not. Um, it actually has, I can't show it to you without completely disassembling the vehicle, uh, a methodology for pulling trailers. Um, like max 200 pounds was what I learned. I wouldn't use it for that. I, I just, I, if you want utility vehicle, buy a utility vehicle. You, I think you'll be a whole lot happier. Um, and um, yeah, so thanks for watching. And probably what I'll do next on this thing is I'll get a little playlist going. Uh, I'm going to change the oil. I'm going to figure that out, right? I have no idea. Uh, probably just climb underneath it, you know, jack it up and climb underneath. I think it's probably the easiest way to, to deal with the machine as far as uh, uh, maintenance is concerned. But uh, I appreciate you joining me. If you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe down below. Helps me out on YouTube. And I am out. So I just came back from uh, the sequence where I went up and down the street and just sort of, you know, full throttle and all that. And this, uh, this couple was going for a walk and they approached me and they were, you know, interested. So I, I provide them with information and, you know, and so forth. And it's like... It looks so nice, right? Well, it does, right? It, that's one thing it definitely has going for it. it it's got some, you know, some sec a sexy look to it. Uh, if not cute, it's, uh, you know, with the darker colors, it's kind of cool. So there you have it, right? Uh, style matters. You're not going to believe this. It was pouring rain yesterday and everything is muddy. It has its first thrown mud.